Now, although the iPhone 14 Pro is ideal for most, it's a great phone. I still changed my mind about it. We're gonna talk about that and more in today's review of the iPhone 14 Pro. One week later, I'm gonna give you my brutally honest thoughts about this device. Let's break down the good, the bad, and the great. Today's video is being brought to you in partnership with Epidemic Sound. If you're any bit of a content creator, video creator, or social media uploader, then you need music, sound effects, and Foley art for your content. And literally one of the best, the biggest, and baddest in the game is Epidemic Sound. There's a link down in the description below to a 30 day free trial. Check it out. All right, let's start off with the cons. That's how I like to start my reviews. I like to let you know what some of the shortcomings or possible shortcomings of said device that you may be shopping. Now, when it comes to the iPhone 14 Pro, Let's be honest, if you're coming from the previous generation, 13 Pros or 13 Pro Maxes, not much has changed, especially from a physical standpoint or innovative point of view. Most of the changes are software related. So if you put iOS 16 on your iPhone 13 Pro or iPhone 13 Pro Max, you typically kind of have the same phone. Now, there are physical differences that separate the two and we'll get more into that a little bit later, but typically not much has changed. So upgrading from the 13 Pro models into the 14 Pro models, you, you gotta wanna do it. You gotta like the changes that Apple made and those will be the things to help persuade you. Now, another con to this device for some people is gonna be the cutout. It's pretty big, let's be honest. There are smaller iterations of camera cutouts out there. Now, Dynamic Island is clever, and we're gonna talk more about that a little bit later on in this review. Now, it's better than a notch, so we'll take it, but it still might be a con for some people. Now, another con on the iPhone 14 Pro, this is software related and Apple related. We're on iOS 16, we still can't fully customize our icon layout. I can't have my icons pulled down to the bottom. I don't know if this is like, a marketing thing from Apple to the point where they want, if you look at their devices from a software standpoint, from the home page, for you to just instantly know that it's an iPhone, as opposed to if we, maybe if we were able to move the icons down, which I still feel like since these icons look the same, we don't really get too many icon alterations. That's the thing, just the home screen in general is the home screen in general. <laughs> Not much has changed since the beginning. That's just uh, one of the cons that a lot of people out there that tend to go with Android is just, they want that freedom of customization. And we still, even this many years later after asking and requesting, we haven't gotten it. And another con to the iPhone 14 Pro right now, I'm going around, there's a little bug in the cameras. Apple made an official statement saying that they're gonna release an update software update pretty soon is gonna help fix it. And it's only third party apps that are causing this. So it's some type of communication issue and hopefully it's fixed by the time most people see this video. But nevertheless, I just wanted to bring that up just so I'm not skipping over that. Let's get into what this thing can do. Now, the first place to start off always is design. Now, as you can see, I have an Apple wallet, an orange one on this gold iPhone 14 Pro, which I think completes the look, but I'll take it off. And Apple always brings high quality premium materials to their iPhone devices. And yes, the stainless steel sides are fingerprint magnets, but most of the time I'm holding my phone like this, so I'm not noticing the fingerprints. The main thing I'm focused on is this display, and then you, know, you get to see the back of the device, especially if you put your device face down like I tend to do. I think this preserves battery and kind of shuts down the display and also keeps me focused. So I like to focus on whatever I'm doing. Sometimes though, I'll sit it on the wallet upright. So it'll be like this. And as you can see, I do not have my always on display on, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why later. But from a design standpoint, Apple always delivers quality premium built devices. All right, so now that we've gotten design out the way, let's flip this bad boy over and let's talk about the display. You guys, the display on this iPhone 14 Pro is amazing. It is extremely bright. It is extremely effective. It is crisp. It is clear. It is OLED goodness and all of the above. And most of all, it is color accurate. The P3 gamut scale on the iPhone's displays, the best, the top of the line. I know last year, 
Apple had the best rated by, uh, I think it's DxO Mark. They bring the crisps, the colors, and the accuracy when it comes to display. These displays are phenomenal. And especially out in direct sunlight, the brightness of these displays at their massive 2000 nit max peak brightness helps the iPhone become the clearest display out in direct sunlight on the market at this point that I know of. Now, I love the way this display looks. I was just outside. Today isn't like max brightness sunlight. It's like overcast, but looking at my iPhone was no different than, you know how you get better visuals on an iPhone indoors? It felt the same way outdoors. And that speaks volume to the display quality and brightness that we're being given on the 14 Pro this year. Now, is that display worth you running from your 13 Pro to hop into this one? I don't know about all that, but it is a pleasure and a joy to have an experience. And it's much appreciated. So as you can see on this OLED display, the colors, the blacks, everything is well represented and it's color accurate. I can't say that enough because that matters most to someone like me who's a creator. So I love these Apple iPhone 14 Pro displays. I love what they bring into the table. Look at that. Look at that. These are just phenomenal. And you can see the smudges on my display. I haven't wiped it down. I'm not just like, you know, overselling it. It just is what it is with normal use. So nevertheless, the iPhone 14 Pro's display gets a thumbs up from me. Now, let's get into our next category. Let's talk performance. This category is quick and easy. Let's be honest. Apple crushes the competition and performance. They control their chips, they control their optimization, they control their hardware. So they have a lot more that they're able to pull off in terms of optimization, power, and efficiency, which reflects in their latest bionic chips and their latest performance, their Geekbench scores, and you know all of the above. Performance is always there, always to its fullest potential on any iPhone Pro device that you choose to grab in the current time. So no no need to go any further than, yo, this thing is smooth as butter, fast as ever, stronger than the competition, and so on. Now cameras are important on flagship devices. I know a lot of people think creators spend too much time on cameras, but we are in the age of the smartphone era where everyone's using their camera consistently and constantly. Whether you're just capturing moments of your day-to-day -day life or you're a content creator like myself, who is always looking to capture footage with their smartphone because it's the most convenient camera that's in your pocket. And it's also great for beginning creators to start off with a smartphone. And the smartphone camera that I always tell beginning creators to start off with are the iPhone cameras. And this year, they're even better than they were before. So this year, we have a nice, massive, camera square, which houses three massive sensors within this camera housing. Now the new 48 megapixel wide camera, which is giving us that resolution, that depth of field and more light. So now obviously they can get better and I hope that they do over time, but I love the attention that Apple has put into this year's camera square. So let's talk about it. Matter of fact, let's not talk about it. Let's show you. All right, here we are, front-facing camera on the iPhone 14 Pro, just giving my thoughts on the camera in general. The cameras on the 14 Pro, the improvements this year are great. They're ideal, like my skin tones are represented very close to natural. Um, they just kind of have like a natural feel to them, especially when you're looking in the uh, OLED display of the device. But let's flip to the rear camera. Now this is the typical wide angle camera that everyone's gonna use. But one thing I wanna do really quick is I wanna switch to ProRes so we get this high quality video, high resolution video, which is offered with Apple. And we can compare that to the regular wide angle video, which most people will use because ProRes is massive files. So ProRes raw, massive files, but extreme quality. This is for the creative in mind, like myself and maybe you, if you're possibly YouTuber, TikTok and Instagramming. It's not the most practical, but it's like ideal for those bougie, high-end situations, shall I say. And then we have the beloved ultra-wide, which is what most people will use to vlog and capture B-roll footage, 
when they don't want to carry a camera or a camera is not allowed you can whip out your iphone get high quality video very well balanced colors and achieve whatever it is you're trying to capture with these lenses and then we got the telephoto lens pretty good quality So today's video is being sponsored and brought to you by Epidemic Sound, which is one of the best places for content creators uploading content onto YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, everything, the above, whether it's personal or commercial. And to show you exactly what I mean is I, as a creator, am using the iPhone 14 Pro to record this video. But... I'm gonna need some audio to put behind this message and that's where Epidemic Sound comes into play because you're able to use their expansive library for music licensing. You pay a small nominal monthly fee which I'm erasing for you for the first 30 days and I'm also giving you a promo code down in the description below to give you 50% off of your yearly annual purchase of a personal plan. My gift from me to you. Whether your project is personal or commercial epidemic sound has you covered and they're super duper clutch and they have one of the biggest libraries they're one of the oldest running music licensing company with creators in mind on the market which is why i use them and why you should too hit the link down in the description below get 30 days free and use that promo code to get 50 percent off so as you saw the cameras are in the elite class when it comes to the iphone 14 pro or if you choose to go 14 pro max they're both interchangeable, the exact same camera square. You got Pro Raw, Pro Res, you got a lot of great options on this camera hump and great color reproduction, great audio, great performance. Whether you're doing video or photo, hands down, the iPhone cameras deliver year after year. Now, let's talk the most controversial subject, the subject as to the reason why I changed my mind, and that is battery life now the battery life on the iphone 14 pro is fire it's great it's ideal like the typical everyday user is probably going to get along just fine with the battery life that you get out of the 14 pro even heavy users can use this device and enjoy it but for me the reason why i changed my mind i'm gonna get straight to it and let you guys know i'm a previous pro max user and a pro max battery it's top tier, it's unmatched, it's like no other. I appreciate the 14 Pro's battery, it's good. I'm able to kinda be laxed on charging with it, but not as much as I was with the Max. And that's where I changed my mind. But for those of you out there who are shopping the iPhone 14 Pro, this battery life is great. You know, Apple rates it up to 23 hours of video playback or what have you. But I like to get straight to the specs of what the battery milliamp hours truly are and when it comes to the iphone 14 pro it has a 3200 milliamp hour battery now it's not the massive 5000 milliamp hour battery which we see as a standard on all of the flagships and so forth but you got to keep in mind about this when it comes to apple when i spoke on their chip and their performance efficiency apple's system is fully optimized and they continue to optimize it and pull and extract as much battery life as they can get out of these devices. Now remember you guys, battery life is 100,000% subjective to the user, meaning how you use your device, your notification, how you choose to brighten your display. Or do you have always on display on or off? There's so many different factors that affect battery life, which is why we all get different opinions about the battery life that we get out of said devices when we're out here testing them. That's why I need you guys to hit the comment section down below. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro, comment what your battery life has been thus far. It's extremely important and it helps kind of like give a spectrum of what battery life on this device is. Now, always on display. That's another reason I knew that this battery wasn't it for me. The first night I left always on display on, went to bed, I woke up, I saw my battery percentage depletion and I was like, whoa, when you become used to having, you know, said battery and said battery life and not seeing percentage depletion, because the always on display on the 14 Pro is pretty bright. Actually, let me go ahead and turn it on really quick. My thing is 
when it comes to the always on display, why does it have to have so much information? Like I have a colorful background. That means all of these pixels are still on. Yes, they're dim, but they're on. And that's a problem. Now you can choose a black background, I guess, to help with your always on display. But if we look at Android and how they implement their always on display, it's just dark. It's just turning off all those pixels. It's just giving you the information, which would be this alone. Now I get it. Apple, they're not gonna want to give you a bland, you know, experience. They want it to, you know, be that Apple experience. But in my opinion, I just feel like this always on display is just draining too much unnecessary battery by using too many unnecessary pixels. That's my opinion when it comes to the always on display. I say, turn it off. Speaking to those out there who want the ideal battery life out of their 14 Pro, turn that always on display off. All in all, battery life on this thing is really good. It's really ideal. For me, it's just skewed because I've experienced better and the best. So it's hard for me to go from that to this and feel satisfied. So I'm kind of spoiled to a degree by Apple with their Max smartphone. So, you know, it is what it is. I still say that the battery life on the 14 Pro is ideal and it will suffer the general public. Heavy users, you might want to look at the Max. My last and final and most important topic of discussion is user experience. You guys, iOS 16, is the star of the show this year. There are so many features and hidden gems about iOS 16. When paired with the 14 Pro and some previous models, this just makes the user experience so much better and so much ideal. Now I know everyone isn't open to subjecting themselves to the Apple ecosystem, so I understand that. But if you do, and if you use multiple Apple devices, the unison and the communication and just the, um, how do you say it? Let me just make it simple. iOS 16 is great. You pair that with this nicely designed 14 Pro, you know, build quality, camera sensor godliness, <laughs> massive display brightness. The new fun dynamic island. Let's talk about it. The dynamic island, I think, is a clever way of taking something that's not as embraced and kind of embracing it. Like, I do like some of the features and functions of the Dynamic Island and how it just makes you interact with the notch as opposed to just stare and feel, you know, thrown off by the notch. Now, yes, Dynamic Island makes this pill shape a lot wider, especially when it's in use, but nevertheless, it's still embraceive of this pill cutout. And I just think they did a cool job. I thought it was a clever, smart idea from the software team over there at Apple, you know, it worked. Love it or hate it, some people won't care for it and some people will absolutely love it and enjoy it. So it just is what it is, it's one of those extra features. But user experience on the 14 Pro was great. I got good battery life, fast, effective, and efficient performance out of this device. I got the typical, you know, Apple iPhone Pro device. I got better cameras than last year better video, better photos. It's overall a better experience. It might be incremental, small, or not enough to some, which is fair because I don't know if this is less update if I have a 13 Pro, but I can say that if you are one of those typical Apple users and you're knocking on the door of upgrade time, if you come in from a four to five year old or three-year-old device, you don't have this redesign, you have not experienced this new efficient battery, you don't have this up-to-date chip, then it might be time to upgrade and experience what the 14 Pro has to offer. With that being said, I still changed my mind. I still left the 14 Pro for the 14 Pro Max. I made a video explaining exactly why, but in short, battery and display size. So if you want an iPhone 14 Pro, don't get caught up in the noise of everyone saying that it's just the same design, not much has changed, because there are key changes from a physical standpoint and camera sensor sizing, a minimal notch, an ideal user experience, an ideal battery life, power and efficiency, and just overall, an iPhone 14 Pro worth buying.